Many apologies for the sudden jump cut in doors, but some asshat of a neighbour decided to start mowing the lawn directly behind the music shed just after I started recording, so hence the quick jump in doors to avoid them. Apologies also for the somewhat haggard appearance I have and the equally haggard voice I'm wearing right now, because I am just coming out of a cold, so I may look and sound a little tired and ragged but I'll struggle on through, don't you worry. So before I was so rudely interrupted, I was mentioning why I was making this video about modifying my new Gibson ES335 clone, very cheap by Gibson standards anyway. My motivations and the exact form of these modifications I was about to make. As I mentioned, anyone who's watched my previous videos knows that I have a large number of Marlin Stratocaster copies. These being the main guitars that I play. In fact, if I reach out now, uh, this might just get into shot. Oof. Here's one of the ones that I will talk about in a future video. The one which I modified into a travel guitar. But yes, they are... Ooh, just put that back. They are Strat copies of various fairly standard classic designs following pretty closely the old original Fender Stratocaster. And the reason I mostly play these guitars is because my main influences and heroes in guitar terms are Richie Blackmore and Jimi Hendrix. And as I mentioned before, this video is way more in the Richie Blackmore camp than the Hendrix camp because this is all about Blackmore's other guitar, the famous Gibson ES-335 which he owned until he lost it or had it stolen by an ex-girlfriend or an ex-wife. I'm never entirely sure about this story, but some point in 71, he lost it. But until that point, he loved it like a favourite child. And then after that, he predominantly just used the Strats. I mean, he occasionally picks up other guitars, but almost exclusively uses the Strats. But until that point, the Strat and the Gibson were pretty much equal as a first choice to grab when he wanted to record any tracks. Now also, as previously mentioned, as well as the six Strat copies I've got, all with various levels of scalloped necks, I have got one semi-acoustic guitar. The Woolworths Audition, or Taisuko is the manufacturer from Japan, semi-acoustic, complete hollow body, electric guitar, and it does a fair impression in terms of its sound of a Gibson ES-335. It isn't one, and it won't sound exactly the same, but it's not bad in terms of its setup and sound. Uh, has the two microphonic humbuckers as pickups. It does a pretty good job of sounding quite a lot like the ES-335, and it has the same double selector for the bridge and neck pickups, so you can make the same combinations of sounds. However, its neck, its fretboard, is absolutely flat. From one side of the neck to the other, it's absolutely dead flat. I'm not used to that. My strats vary depending on their age in terms of the curvature of the frets, but none of them are absolutely flat. But this semi-acoustic I have, the Audition, is absolutely dead flat across the frets. And I do have a bit of trouble playing that. I'm just not used to that um, as a profile. So I wanted to get something a little bit closer to the actual Gibson ES-335. And as mentioned, this Rally ES-335 clone is very close. Now, as I said, I spent £100 on this, which isn't very much for a Gibson ES-335, uh, but it is still the most I've ever spent on a guitar. The next most expensive guitar I ever bought, coincidentally, was the uh, Audition Woolworths late 60s Tice Cove manufactured semi-acoustic guitar, which I bought off eBay for about 80 quid many, many years ago, uh, and I've been very happy with that. But, because it's a rare guitar, 
I didn't want to go hacking about with it and modifying it because it, there aren't many of them left and I didn't want to damage this relatively precious, in terms of its rarity, guitar, even if not in monetary terms. Although the that said, the auditions are worth about two, three hundred quid. They're not nothing, but they're still not as expensive as a Gibson ES335 even now. So, hence I did fork out a hundred quid for this and made it the most expensive guitar I own, even though I'm about to hack it to pieces in some horrible modifications, one of which Richie Blackmore would approve of because it would make it far closer to his lost ES335. The other, although inspired by Richie Blackmore, he would definitely not approve of because, well, he would never have allowed it to be done to his Gibson ES335, I'm pretty sure. But it is something that he does do to his guitars. So uh, some of you may have already guessed the horror that is about to be unleashed on this guitar now. By the way, speaking of the Warworth Audition one, you will have seen that in a previous video. If I haven't already mentioned it or shot to it in the video by now, you'll probably be seeing a little clip of my video about the Woolworths Audition late 60s semi-acoustic as I speak. As you saw me earlier playing this guitar, it was very easy to play straight out of the box. I've done very little mods to this so far. I've done very little setup to it so far. It was largely set up correctly. The intonation was almost exactly as it should be. The action of the strings was almost bang on. I've raised the pickups because I tend to like to raise the pickups as close as I can get them to the strings without them actually interfering with the strings, but that's just my own personal taste and the kind of sounds I want to get out of it. But beyond that, I've done nothing to this yet, so the modifications will happen after this video finishes. The guy who sold it to me said it sounds okay, and he had to then, after handing me the guitar, disappear back into his residence to pick up the gig bag he said he'd send with it. And while he had it, I strummed the guitar without plugging it into it, I think because I didn't have anything with me, and was amazed at how good it sounded, how well it played, and how low the action was, among other things. And I never quite managed to get to the bottom of what he thought was wrong with this guitar, because I've subsequently played it through the amps, it sounds really good, it is very easy to play, even though this has a heavier set of strings on than I would normally use. Now I normally use eights, but this is, if not nines, then a set of tens on it, which is heavier than I like, but you know, I can still play with it as you heard, but I will definitely restring this with eights once I've finished doing the modifications. But that said, the guitar was a real bargain for a hundred quid. And uh, I've looked online and the reviews for these are, are about 10 years plus old. So I'm wondering if Rally went bust because they made too good a guitar and they couldn't afford to keep running their factories like that, where they were just pumping out high quality guitars and not charging enough money for them. So Rally don't appear to exist as far as I can see anymore. If you ever come across a Rally semi-acoustic, a Rally ES335 clone like this one, I would recommend picking it up just for thrashing about with, but... You could also try and do the horrible things I'm about to do to it too, and not feel the guilt you'd feel if you did it to a real ES-335. The only minor niggles I would say are that the bridge adjuster nuts, screws, bolts, whatever you want to call them, are a little bit on the tight side. Uh, they were difficult to turn. Given they've got the hand-turning fitments that would allow you to do it just with your thumb and finger, that's way too stiff to actually use and it's easier to get a screwdriver and stick it in the top and use the slot at the top of the bolt to change it that way. It's a minor point. Similarly, the tuners are, I think I mentioned before, a little bit on the tall side. They're very tall gearing, so you turn the tuner a little way and you get a lot of change in the actual tuning. And I'm quite used to unforgiving tuners on these cheaper East German Stratocaster copies, not that they are bad tuners, they don't lose tuning, they hold it well, but they have got fairly tall gearing, but nowhere near as tall as the gearing on this thing. So one slight problem, I would say, is that you, if you are particularly heavy-handed or not very fine in your movements, you might want to change out the tuners for something a little more forgiving so that you can turn it a further distance and get a smaller change in the tuning. Again, I say these are minor niggles. This is not something that you need to worry about for most people, I think. But, you know, I just want to be honest, this isn't a perfect guitar, but it was £100 for an ES-335 clone. My God! I'd definitely not complain about that. So, just to try and give you a little bit more of the sound quality, I will try the guitar in various different positions so you get some idea of what it sounds like. I'm not going to play for very long because, you know, 
this video is probably going to be long enough anyway. But let's see how it goes. I've brought down my uh, Vox AC30 amp peg, plug in the guitar mini amp, and a couple of the speakers to uh, play through. The sound won't be quite as awesome as the sound from my Vox MV50 out in the shed, but it ain't bad. And you can have a quick listen of the different positions. So I'll start it on low volume, run through all the pickups, then I'll rack it up to a higher volume and do the same thing, both at a low volume and a high volume, because that's predominantly how I control the tone of the guitar, it's changing the volume levels. <laughs>
So there you heard me thrashing about on the two pickups in the three different positions at various different volume levels. You get some idea of the sound, and I think it sounds quite a lot like a Gibson ES-335 to me, but no doubt some Gibson Puritans will come and burn me at the stake for saying such a thing. And so I think I've stalled long enough, I can't really go on any longer without saying what modifications I was going to make. The first modification, the one that Richie Blackmore would no doubt completely approve of, is me adding a Bixby tremolo to it, because this is, as you can see, let's grab it again, uh, as you can see, is one without a tremolo, whereas Blackmore's obviously had a tremolo, and every guitar I own except for my acoustic and the bass have tremolos, so yeah, I want a tremolo on my Gibson ES-335 knockoff, thank you. So that's one of the modifications. The other modification, which Richie Blackmore would definitely not approve of in terms of applying it to a Gibson ES-335, although he has definitely been the inspiration for it, is I am going to gently scallop the neck of this guitar. Oh, I can hear the screams of horror even now. Yeah, Blackmore scallops his strats, and I scallop my strat copies, and I'm very used to using a scallop neck, and I in I like the freedom and the lack of resistance you get when playing on a scallop fretboard so you're not dragging against the wood at any point. I'm going to do the same, at least in a modest way, to this ES-335 clone as well. So this will be a scalloped Gibson ES-335 clone. So there you go. The full horror of the modifications has been revealed. And in the next video, the full horror of the modifications will be revealed because you'll get to see and hear them in action. I, fingers crossed, hope it will still be a playable guitar at the end of it. And further to that, I hope to catch you all in the next video where you can see the results of my handiwork, however horrific it may be. Anyway, until then, I hope you enjoyed and found this video moderately informative. And until then, take care. Thank you.